No, the light f reflects into my glasses. So right, let's do this with my glasses on. Hi. Since my last video, I've been really struggling to come up with ideas for new videos. And since I still want my channel to be very uh, entertainment orientated, I thought a good way for those of you who don't know me is to do a few top 10 lists. And what better way to start than with my top 10 films. Now just one or two things before we get into the actual video. I will do a video at some point explaining why these films are my top 10 films because I feel like after this video some people might be wondering why I've chosen these films. So with that said, let's get on with this video. Here is a film that when I first watched it, I was probably considered too young to appreciate the content. But despite that, Gladiator still blew me away performance wise. And I would definitely say it is one of the first films that made me not only appreciate films for the action or the cool set pieces, but for also its story and the performances that the actors are giving. And as I got older, I found myself looking at films and looking for these elements more and more. And really, if it wasn't for Gladiator, I wouldn't have started looking for them in the first place. Yeah. District 9 is by far one of my favourite sci-fi films ever made. I just love the fact that it blends social realist aspects which is the injustice in the Johannesburg slums, the racial hatred and corporate devilry with a very cool science fiction premise. It doesn't feel too preachy but it also doesn't feel too eccentric and out there. It feels like what would most probably happen if aliens landed in a place like Johannesburg. And I just love the set pieces. The special effects are really awesome. I love the mech fight near the end. That's probably one of my favorite scenes from the film. And I just find it to be a very interesting, uh, cool and touching story. That's why District 9 is on my top 10. Now, whilst the Terminator franchise has been hitting a bit of a rough patch recently, Terminator 2 still remains to be one of my favourite films ever. It has a really cool opening sequence, really good performances by sci-fi film standards, and has an interesting story that took the franchise to a whole new level, as well as making Terminator 2 an intriguing movie in itself. And I think a lot of people were surprised with how emotionally attached they got to the Terminator and I really think it's one of Arnold Schwarzenegger's best performances. The ending to this film is by far one of the saddest endings ever. I cried a lot when I watched that for the first time and for the other three times afterwards. <laughs> Now, if you haven't guessed already, I am a massive fan of the science fiction genre. From time travel to space travel, and to me, Star Wars Episode V, The Empire Strikes Back, is one of the greatest science fiction films ever made. It has a really awesome opening battle, the Battle of Hoth, a really cool cast who give really capturing performances, an interesting story with a lot of substance, and of course, one of the greatest villains in cinema history, Darth Vader, who gives, which is arguably one of the greatest twists in cinema history. There is a lot of greatest somethings in cinema history in this movie, which is why it's on my top 10 list. Now we move away from the science fiction genre and into the superhero movie genre. Not much change in maturity there, I'm afraid. Now I imagine there may be a few groans and mumbles when you saw Avengers was on this list, but hear me out. The reason why Avengers Assemble is on my top 10 movies is because 
To me, it is the second greatest comic book movie ever made. Joss Whedon does a really good job at translating the Avengers from the comic books to the big screen and the cast do a really good job at not only portraying their characters as they have done in the previous films but also being on the same screen together as a Marvel fan and a fan of the Avengers is something that I really expected the sort of same chemistry to translate from the comic books to the movie and they do that perfectly. It is just so awesome to see these characters together. It really set my uh, fanboyisms to ultra high levels and it was just a really fun and cool movie and refreshing from the whole post Dark Knight thing where every superhero movie must now try and copy Nolan and let's all be dark and gritty and I just like that about the Avengers it's just pure honest good old-fashioned fun and that's why it's on here Yes, The Lion King is on this list. Yes, I do have the song from the opening titles on my iPod and yes, I do sing it aloud every time it comes on. Now this is one of the two examples I use when I say that cartoons are not just for kids and they shouldn't be the dumbed down stupid things that a lot of them are today. Whilst The Lion King does have the sing-along songs that are obviously tailored for more childlike audience and a lot of the jokes are tailored to a younger audience though not so much where adults sit there and go really why are we watching this I mean hey as an 18 year old adult male which I'm supposed to be I'm supposed to be an adult now though if this list has told you anything so far that's not really working out for me I still laugh at the jokes that Timon and Pumbaa make and really the Lion King tailors more towards a family audience or even an older audience I'd say. There were things that I didn't get when I was younger. I didn't get how upsetting the whole Mufasa thing was. How much of a tragedy that is on a young child. Well, cub in this case. And also, I didn't realise how awesome Jeremy Irons was as Scar when I was younger. Seriously, that dude is one of the best movie villains ever. I thought since this is a top four, I'd change my t-shirt. And it's not because I stopped filming one day, forgot to film the rest, and then started filming a different day. Now some of you are probably wondering why the Iron Giant is taking a place above the Lion King and really it's just personal preference. I love the Iron Giant as a story, I just think it's such a charming and relatable story as I myself, as I would imagine many other kids similar to my age at the time, would have loved to have had a giant robot as a friend and this is a story about a boy who finds a giant robot and they become friends. It's just such a heartwarming sight seeing these two characters on screen together which is further helped by the absolutely brilliant voice acting of Vin Diesel in this film. You find yourself so taken with the relationship that these two have forged and it really tugs at your heartstrings. I'm not kidding you, every time I watch the ending of this film I cry. I don't know why I but I just do in fact I watched it after writing up this segment and I cried again now we're coming into the top three and really every other film in this list could easily be changeable at some point in time I don't think they will but it is a possibility but these films will always stay top three from now till I die probably because these three films are my absolute favorites ever so here we go the only other superhero film on this list and in my opinion the greatest superhero film ever created now I feel like The Dark Knight is by far the 
best example to use when saying that comic books and superheroes are not just tailored towards a younger audience. Sure, a lot of them are, a lot of them are, but you'll find as you read that there are still a large number of comic book storylines that are tailored to an older audience, both in Marvel and in DC. And I feel like The Dark Knight is the first that really captures the more darker, grittier side of comic books. The Dark Knight has a really interesting story, great characters, especially the Joker. Ledger does a brilliant job as a Joker. It's such a shame that he took his own life not long after the film was made. Nolan really did bring that whole sort of Batman versus Joker conflict that we've seen in the comic book so many times to the big screen and he did it absolutely brilliantly. Probably the best Nolan film in my opinion. Now, I love dinosaurs. I loved them when I was younger. I still love them now, and I will probably love them in the many years to come. And it was Jurassic Park that started off this love of dinosaurs. But it was also Jurassic Park that started off my love of film as well. And every other time since my first viewing to my last viewing, I have always watched Jurassic Park and been so awe-inspired and letting my imagination go wild. And really, Jurassic Park is one of the two films that I bring up when people ask me, why do I want to make films? And I say, it's because I watched Jurassic Park, I just looked at it and I thought, I would love to make a film like Jurassic Park. And the other example is coming up next. Of course, Lord of the Rings takes the top spot. I absolutely love Lord of the Rings. And I know what some of you are going to inevitably say in the comments section that The Lord of the Rings is three films and it shouldn't take up the spot. But hear me out. To say that one of The Lord of the Rings films is my favourite film would be like saying that this chapter of this book is my favourite book. To me, the whole film experience is so much better and so much greater and so much more awesome when it's considered all one big film experience. Like I said with Jurassic Park, when people ask me why do you want to make films, I say because when I was younger, when I was a little boy, I sat down and I watched Jurassic Park and then I watched the Lord of the Rings trilogy and I thought, wow, how awesome would it be to make something like that, to make these incredible pieces of work that are so loved and so treasured by a lot of people and produce something that maybe one day will be on the top 10 list of someone else's video. Well, thank you for watching. We've come to the end. I really hope you enjoyed it. I hope it wasn't too long. I will, like I said, make a video sort of explaining my thought process behind choosing the films that are on this list. And I will do a review for each of these films because I feel like I haven't properly portrayed how much I love each of these films. Please do subscribe, please give me a thumbs up. Thanks for watching again and I'll see you next time. I'm going to have one hell of a time editing this video.